Hunt tomorrow night, first rehearsal. Yes, I have the address. Could you hold a second? I think that time works for me. Thank you very much. What? I got the part. Kristen, it's great. Like a play or something? Yeah, and guess what? I'm the lead. The lead? That's like the biggest part. <laughs> I can't believe it. Somebody I know is going to be a star on Broadway. Okay, the play isn't exactly on Broadway. It's more of an off-off-Broadway play. How far off off? Brooklyn. <laughs> Nothing wrong with Brooklyn. A lot of great old theaters out there. <laughs> it's in a very small theater in a basement under a dry cleaner's. Hey, you're getting paid to act. Five bucks a show, plus bus fare. Enjoy the lead. In my New York debut. Congratulations. <laughs> oh, will you come? Hey, not only will I come, I'm gonna bring a pair of pants that need cuffs. <laughs> It's so cool. I'm gonna have the great Terry Bradshaw living in one of my buildings. If you're that excited, how about let me have the place free? <laughs> I am the great Terry Bradshaw. I get a lot of stuff free. <laughs> Not this. <laughs> Bradshaw throws! Incomplete. <laughs> Kristen, will you get the great Terry Bradshaw an envelope for his contracts? Anything for a Hall of Famer and four-time Super Bowl champ. The girl knows her football. I know my Bradshaw. <laughs> hey, number 12, care to support the arts? She's in a play in Brooklyn, and she is the lead. Ooh, here. Glad to help out. That's a hundred dollars. Thank you. Now we won't have to share my comb. You know, uh, Terry, that, that, that really wasn't necessary. Yes. Now Tommy's gonna look like a tightwad if he doesn't throw in. Oh. Hey, Tommy, don't worry about it. That's a hundred for you, man. And here's a hunt ski from Aldo. Get some costumes. Oh, costumes cost more than a hundred bucks. I mean, the belt I'm wearing costs two hundred. Here's a couple hundred more. Oh, this is so wonderful. The director asked us to come up with a couple of bucks for the show, and I've raised five hundred. You, Kristen, have raised one thousand. Hey. Valentine, what are you doing? Trying to show me up in front of the little lady. One Z, two Z, three Z, four. Hey, five hundred more. Right there. Hey, Tom, Bradshaw's in for nine hundred bucks. You're starting to look like a deadbeat. <laughs> Is that so? Kristen, what do you need for the whole production? The director said we needed seven thousand dollars. Aldo, go cut Kristen a check for seven thousand dollars. Tommy, that's too much. Only if you're a deadbeat. Valentine throws touchdown. <laughs> Happens all the time. Guys that never played the game always feel like they have to show me up. I just primed a pump. I'm a bad boy. <laughs> but I support the arts. I thought I was a zero, Rose. I thought I had potential. You do, Vincent. You got a world of potential. I know I'm not much. No mind this is a theater? Shh. <laughs> They're working. Sure don't look like the place where I saw Lion King. <laughs> Aldo, this is a real theater. Where guys like Brando and Pacino got their start. Really? What about Joe Pesci? I, I don't know. Excuse me, guys with ties. The Tony Robbins seminar is two doors down. Paul, that's Tommy Valentine, the man who wrote the check. Oh, change of tone. <laughs> Welcome, Paul Entrell, writer, director, and sometimes actor. What can our humble company do to make you guys happy? You can show us where our friggin' money went. There's nothing here. I'll have to pardon my associate. He liked Lion King. Okuno Matata. <laughs> 
Tell me, Alda, what are you guys doing here? Well, we were working late, and we started to get hungry, and Aldo says, what are you in the mood for? And I say, a meatball sandwich. And Aldo says, I know a great meatball sandwich place in Brooklyn. I say, hey, you only live once, let's go. So we hop in a limo. He's lying. He came here to see you. Tommy. Okay, I just wanted to see what you do outside the office. No, the acting thing. That is so sweet. Paul, it's okay if the man who wrote the big check stays and watches us work. I know we're just guys in ties. <laughs> Did everybody hear that? The perfect example of irony. <laughs> Excuse me, I gotta go do my acting thing. Okay, people, let's focus here. We're on death row energy. Listen, I... No, I can't. I love you, Rose. Say it. Do you want to know what to believe? Believe that once there was a girl who fell in love with a man. She wanted to tell him every second of every minute of every day. Oh, but now I can say it out loud. I love you, Vincent. <laughs> Be brave, my darling. For us, midnight has no darkness. And blackout. <laughs> How about that, boss? Yeah. Good job. You have a foundation inspection for Ballantine Towers at 6 p.m. You have dinner with the mayor at 7 p.m. And your real dinner with Carmen Electra at 9. I'm showing her an apartment. Yours. Cheap shot. But let's hope so. Tommy. I don't want to put you on the spot, but last night when you saw me do the scene, what'd you think? Honestly. Good job. <laughs> Thanks. You know, saying good job, it's not exactly what you say to an actor when you really like what they did. It's more like what you say to a puppy when it piddles on the paper. <laughs> You're right. Good job doesn't really say it. So what'd you really think? Kristen, you did fine. I appreciate the feedback. Anytime. What does he know? What? What did you think of my acting at the rehearsal? You were fantastic. When you sent Vincent off to the chamber or the chair or whatever, <laughs> you left there standing alone, I teared up. Look, I'm doing it again just thinking about it. Really? I'm telling you. For us, midnight has no darkness. Oh, jeez. Kristen, is Aldo still here? No, he just stepped out. Tell him I'm looking for him. Sure. You know, I was just talking to Aldo. He was very moved by my scene. Good. <laughs> what? You didn't really like me, did you? Hey, guy and tie. What do I know about acting? Say it. You thought I stunk up the place. <laughs> you did not stink up the place. Well, then tell me what you really thought. Okay. What is the title of the play? A Kiss Before Midnight. Exactly. A Kiss Before Midnight. Everything in this play is building to that last climactic moment. When I kiss Vincent. Right. I didn't buy it. You didn't. I'm sorry, Kristen, I just didn't. That guy is going off to the electric chair. And you kissed him like he was going out for a quart of milk. But I gave it everything I had. That might have been the problem. What do you mean? Look, you are a woman with many great qualities. Uh-huh. But at the moment of the kiss, Rose has got to surrender herself completely to this guy. Kristen, I'm not really sure that you can pull that off. 
Why not? Look, I'm just guessing, but I think the best acting probably comes from personal experience. And what I know about you personally, you haven't had much experience. <laughs> Thank you for your honesty. Hey, you know, I, I, I build high rises. What do I know, right? I know. I'm still thinking about it, too. <laughs> 